I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy. And we need help. Each week we stumble through a new book, method, or concept that brings us one step closer to being our best self. Yes, we make fun of ourselves. And others. But mostly just ourselves. So here's to not taking self-help quite so seriously. Welcome to We Need Help. I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy, and welcome to part two of our topic on bridge burning. So part two is where we take a book and we read the book and see if it helps in any way, shape, or form. So bridge burning, yeah, yeah and uh, so we did Kitty Flanagan's book, which is uh, bridge burning and other hobbies, and no. <laughs> We'd like to burn the book. We didn't believe in bur- bur- little, little book burning before, but now we do. Yeah, I was like not a fan of book burning, but then I'm like, then I read this book and I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know I'm what? down. There's something there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my oh God. man. It's, it was a rough read. Therefore, was, I quit it. It was just boring. It was like so boring. It was one of those, this is how I felt when I was reading it. I felt like I was cornered at a party by a girl who thought she's thinks she's hilarious and just wants and to tell these hilarious stories and she's so not funny and i'm like i see and her voice is piercing her yeah voice is piercing yeah and and she's telling these stories which she thinks are hilarious and they're just not funny at all and i'm like mm-hmm. eyeing you from across the room like come and save me and nobody's saving me do you ever have that like Sometimes I get yeah. so mad at Machek when he doesn't rescue me because he should know that I'm suffering talking to when this When you person. get him crazy eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... Like horse eyes when they're like under attack yeah, from like, a tiger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's how I felt. I felt like I, it was a, I could not get away from the conversation, but then I realized I could just stop reading the book. Hit, so. <laughs> hit delete. I know. Yeah. It, like... I had this, it's weird because I think Kitty Flanagan actually was our server in Orlando last (laughs) weekend. Like, We found out that she's a dog mom and a dog aunt. Okay, I'm going to tell you all dog moms, when you say, somebody says, I'm like a mom of five and you say, well, I'm a dog mom. (laughs) It's not the same. It's really not. And I'm a dog mom. (laughs) You're a dog mom. I'm a and mom. it's really not the same. <laughs> There's nothing like Cookie didn't like destroy your body. No. Like she didn't make it so when you sneeze, you slightly pee. No, no. No. Actually, Scarlett <laughs> didn't do that either because I had a cesarean. But I'm just saying like there are things that when somebody says, but I'm a dog mom, it's sort of offensive to so your server moms. was just one of these people who was like talking like she was all over the place and she like felt it necessary to tell every single boring little aspect of herself just like kitty flanagan did <laughs> yeah yeah like this book like i had high hopes because like bridge burning and other hobbies like that sounds funny I and i expect and, and her face is so cute on the cover yeah and i expected there to be like lots of different stories about bridge burning None. There were none. There were like no. kind of, but not really. Like there was a story no. when she broke up with somebody by moving, but who hasn't done that? Who hasn't done that? Talk yeah. to me when you like <laughs> glom onto another family in another country. Yeah. <laughs> talk to somebody like yeah. Talk to me when you you know. So have, she, yeah. She had a, a a whole chapter on when she went to a yoga retreat as a child and had to suffer through vegetarianism. I'm like, when I was in third grade, my mom broke up with a boyfriend, randomly moved us to my aunt's ex-boyfriend's house in Upper New York State from Illinois and into a house where the guy had just hung him, a guy had just hung himself. And there was an underground railroad in this New York house. It was amazing. (laughs) And... His new wife, not my aunt, which is so random, was also vegetarian. Okay. That's a better story. That's a fucking story. (laughs) Hey, forget about it. (laughs) What the fuck? Over here. (laughs) I wasn't down dogging and had to suffer through some rice. Yeah. And then, like, her story about she broke up with somebody by moving in the same country, just a different area of the country. And I'm like, talk to me when you faked a brain tumor to break up with somebody. (laughs) Like, talk to me then. Okay. Twice. 
Okay. <laughs> Twice. That is the same guy. That is burning a bridge right there. Like <laughs> You faked your own death. I faked my own death twice. And he's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Shame on you again. You're not a good person. Yeah. You're just not a good person. I am really not a good person. Well, I wasn't. I'm, I am now because I have to be. Um, but you like... <laughs> I once went to a party at, at when I was at Marquette University. My friends were like, come to this party. I'm like, I don't, I didn't feel like a party. And I'm like, I didn't feel like talking or interacting with anybody. So I said, if I go, I'm going to pretend I'm deaf. And I thought that's a great idea. So I went to this party and pretended I was deaf the entire night. I was pretending to sign. Uh huh. And this, my friend brought this guy over and said, can you talk to my friend? She's deaf and she's like really shy and she's kind of embarrassed that no guy wants to like flirt with her so he like crouched she could read lips though so he crouched down and i was already like a couple drinks in so he crouched (laughs) down and he was like talking like this so i would understand him like with my you know with his lips he's such a nice person and my friend from across the room was like izzy and i turned my head and he goes (laughs) his face just dropped he goes you're not really deaf and i said no i'm not and he goes you are a horrible human being (laughs) that was my cue to exit i was like i gotta go (laughs) i've only faked being deaf once and that was in a cab and i was so hungover leaving nashville and like i got in the cab and i was like okay you know i like the thought of having the cabbie chit chat with me was awful so i just showed him where i was going on my phone and i i just made the signal i can't hear (laughs) the international signal for i can't Mm. (laughs) cannot hear and so he took it was the best ride to the airport i've ever had Uh. so i'm also not a good person You know, oh. it, it sucks. Like, but I mean, that's stuff that you need to write books about because it's funny. But like, just simple everyday stuff, you're supposed yeah. to enjoy the everyday, but you're not supposed to make everyone else suffer through your everyday. Yeah, and it's it's quite. I thought it was quite ironic because she her, she wrote this whole chapter about how she moved to a different part of the country to get away from this guy because she was annoyed by his catchphrases. And her whole book was like that. that. Her whole book was annoying and full of catchphrases, I thought. So it was like the pot calling the kettle black. I was just like, okay. (laughs) Was he a mirror? (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's you can't see anything that doesn't lie within you. Yeah. 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 So. So anyway, about Kitty, like, so she's an Australian comedian. She was born in 1968. So she's uh, 10 years older than us. She's an Australian comedian, writer and actress. She's done a lot of stand-up comedy, which I would, you know, change to sit-down comedy with her. (laughs) It's fetal Um, position comedy. (laughs) (laughs) She was born in a town that has an interesting name, Manly. Ooh, I want to go to Manly. Yeah, her father is... Men, 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 men. Manly, I'm from Manly. Um, <laughs> her father, John <laughs> Flanagan, is an author, and he's known for fantasy books. Hmm. So, yeah. And then her, her brother So that's how cool, she though. got published. That's how she got yeah, published. Yeah, yeah. And her sister's a musician, and one half of a 1990s indie band called Club Hoy. Club okay, Hoy. We've got a l- Club Hoy. <laughs> um... Her brother Michael, brother Michael sounds sounds good. Are He's you secretly sh- in love with blo- brother Michael? Brother Michael. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's not a priest. He is a chef, and he runs a coffee shop in the snow fields of Japan. He's probably one of those guys that like. Do you know those guys that are just attracted to Asian women, and that's it? He's probably one of those. My sister is just attracted to Asian men. Oh, Janice. Okay. Yeah, she is. She is. Married to a Filipino guy, hmm. but she doesn't, she's never, ever dated someone who's not Asian. Oh, interesting. I wonder that's if that's like a past life thing. She doesn't like body hair. 
Mm, okay. So that's part of her. Yeah, it might have been a past life thing because she's like staunchly into it. She doesn't make any exceptions. Okay, that's interesting. Everyone has yeah. their thing. I just wonder where those things come from. Because I do, yeah. they have to come from somewhere. So anyway, Flanagan lives now in Melbourne with a Burmese cat named Sarge. She's got two dogs. Uh, one is a Hevanese named Henry. That is the most interesting part. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's her brother. I, I actually like when animals are named regular names. Yeah. Like, like a cat named Paul or something like that. Yeah, funny a to cat me. I named like that. Paul. <laughs> That sounds like a like a song. I wrote this yeah. one about a cat named Paul. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I feel like only like Bob Dylan could get away with that. Yeah. Anyway, like, yeah, this book d- didn't have I, I was very disappointed because it didn't have enough about burning bridges. There was just one story of how she was working in a comedy club in Singapore. It was called Bridge Burning in Singapore or something. And uh, she just like insulted the owner was never invited back again but it was not an it was it was that was it okay like (laughs) that's just like i want to like it it feels like this could have been like easily a chelsea handler book where it was like crazy stories like she yeah you know like that would have been amazing but it wasn't it was like missing that edge at all it was missing funny because i think she thinks she's hilarious and it just wasn't funny. I was really, I wanted to give it a chance. I was listening to it and like, I'm going to crack a smile. That, like, but, okay. I think that people's funny comes from like <laughs> some sort of like adversity. And I don't think that she's had any. Yeah. Some kind of trauma. Right? Yeah. You need to like, call me when you've had some trauma. Yeah. 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 You know, working, working as a teenager in a crawfish factory. Hardly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk hardly to me when you've done trauma. lemon shakeups at a carnival. Okay. <laughs> Because I've done that. <laughs> All right. So, did your um, perception of bridge burning change? I mean, this book didn't really it okay. didn't really it missed the mark. But have you been thinking about bridge burning over the last week? And what has come I up have for you? been thinking a lot about bridge burning, and I've kind of had an epiphany about it. Oh, do share. Because I think that, like, we were talking about it, and I'm like, I, I. You know, you were like, you you love this subject. You love to bridge burn. And I don't think it's that I love to bridge burn. Okay. I think that the universe sets bridges on fire when your relationship has quit serving you both. Mm-hmm. And I don't like the discomfort of standing on that bridge, like, very long. And I so like that. I... It seems like I burn bridges, but I let them burn. Like, it, it, because, like, I I, th- I thought back and, like, just, like, this last situation with this very, very toxic person and friend. I did about six months of trying to make that bridge stop burning. And I threw money at it. I tried everything. <laughs> I'm just picturing you throwing money at a burning bridge and it's just burning. Exactly. Like, pow, pow, when you're like, oh, oh my just God. more, maybe more. And it's like, it's maybe paper. More. That's it's ex- paper. It's going to burn. <laughs> that's exactly because I realized that's what was important to her. Yeah. And like, I tried to do everything, but the bridge was already set aflame. Yeah. You're so, like getting blisters and smoke inhalation. I and, was hurt. Yeah. I was in severe pain I couldn't understand it like because it wasn't me it was like the bridge had been had been started for both of us I was no longer able to deal with her lessons and she could not be around me it was a a severe reflection that was not like she was unwilling to look at so it was just like horrible for both of us yeah and i think we like so my my thing of it is is the bridge is already on fire i think i think the universe sets those fires for us when we're done yeah and our job is to let it burn not try to put it out let it burn let it go release it it doesn't mean that there will never be another bridge you know, to whatever, if that serves us again, 
we aren't the birds. What I'm saying is we probably, for the more, most case, we're not the one who lights the bridge on fire. And we're not the one that builds the bridge either. Like people mm -hmm. come into our life when they're supposed to be there and people leave our life when they're supposed to not be there. Yeah, I love that. And my mentor, whenever I'm like suffering because like a relationship, friendship, for example, has ended, like it just kind of, we grew apart or whatever. And my um, mentor, she always says like, the universe will put in your life the people who are meant to be in your life. So just trust the universe. It's not up to you. And yeah. that just relieves a lot of the pressure. Because for me, I, I feel like I'm the one who has to hold on to the bridge. I'm the one who has to build the bridge. I'm the one who has to do everything. And she's like, just it's chill. Exhausting. Just, it's exhausting. It is exhausting. So I like that. Just let it burn. Well, and it's the whole concept that, like, do you believe that life is happening happening to you? Or do you believe that life is happening for you? And I do believe that life is happening for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like I am like, it doesn't mean I'm not manifesting what I want, but like all of those relationships that I thought back, I thought about my divorce. I thought about many friendships that um, I was broken hearted that ended, you know, whether I ended or they ended or we just grew apart. But like thinking back, I have zero regrets over burned, uh, burned bridges. None. <laughs> I thought you were going to say burn shit. I'm like, you know, because a bridge to bullshit will never mm -hmm. serve you. Yeah. You know, yeah. and but I think of those relationships before and there was a lot that I gained out of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of lessons, you know. And sometimes I think what helps me also is it's not always about me. Sometimes the other person has to learn a lesson and I'm just the conduit of the universe. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like sometimes yeah. the universe has to use me and I'm fine with that. It's not always about me. Like sometimes I need to be there for somebody else and then I don't. And that's cool. Well, and I think that like the universe, whatever you want to call it, like you have brought enough shoulders to carry that cross. You know, a lot of times like you don't, you may like I could handle the what just happened with that friendship. I can handle it. Mm -hmm. I've lived without people in my life. I've lived without my child. Mm -hmm. You know, I can handle living without somebody. So maybe for her to understand what it's like to lose a true friend, mm -hmm. like she, like the universe had to use me because yeah. I can walk in that. I can walk with that. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I'm strong enough to walk without almost, almost anyone, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. So good I stuff. just, I, I, I think it's really good. And I still think, you know, burn, you know, call it a, a bridge burner. I'll still be a bridge burner in my mind. But I really do think that it's just me walking off the burning bridge. Mm -hmm. That's already a fire. Yeah you know, set on fire. So yeah, <clears throat> that being said, um, this book has kind of gotten me to think it's made it easier to to burn like these little small bridges like toxic people bye. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, <laughs> like it's in, inspired not this book, but this topic, I think and you and I talking more than this book, but yeah, um, in <laughs> inspired me to like if if something is toxic I don't feel right about it it's much easier for me to just walk away just to light that match and be like pink you know I wish to God it was like um seven months that I like saw that the bridge was needed to be burned I, I you know I, I wasn't really sure like what was happening but I regret standing on that bridge so long you just shouldn't stand on a bridge that's on fire yeah and yeah. I suffered with so much pain trying to figure it out and why why this was happening. And I wanted to hold on to that so badly. And I wish to God I would have just let it go. Mm. You know, my child yeah. suffered with it. You know, our family suffered with it. It was like a lot. And yeah. I think that I just burnt every single, like I was trying to hold on so desperately, you know, to what I thought was was the case i didn't want to be wrong either yeah i think a lot of times when you don't burn the bridge 
It's because he wanted to be you're right. You're like in the first you're place. like that engineer who designed the bridge, and you're like, mm, mm. Mm, this is- <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 it's not working. He's like, no, 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 <laughs> it's not safe. It's toxic. It's horrible. No, you're but being used. <laughs> Oh, yeah. good stuff. Good stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's so uh, it's funny. So I like I I will say uh I it's really it, I think it's just like you. It's fired me up to release some of those things in my yeah. life that w- aren't working for for me. I'm just like thinking about how great my life is now without that relationship and like Mm -hmm. how great it could be without a couple others. (laughs) (laughs) Who's next? (laughs) Actually, my life is wonderful right now. I'm so excited about it. Yeah. Um, Which leads us to our next subject, which I'm so excited about. I'm really excited about. Jason asked for this. Okay. Why did did Jason ask for this? (laughs) I think it might be a passive aggressive uh, way of telling me I gaslight him, but uh, the subject is gaslighting. Oh my gosh, that is so exciting! What's the book? Like, whose book? Are, well, we'll figure out the book, but the subject is gaslighting. That's awesome. Yeah, I think we did figure out the book. We did. Oh, oh, good, good, yes. good. Yeah. So I used to be talk? a gaslighter. I was like, I was a. I didn't realize. I mean, I did realize deep down I was doing it, but it was very subtle gaslighting. <laughs> I think gaslighting is a natural thing, like on some levels, but it can be done like on such a malice way and like yeah. malice manipulation. Like yeah. you have to like I'm excited because it's such a unique subject and it's so like I think it it's ingrained in us from birth, yeah. you know, like from how we're managed and manipulated as children. Yeah. Um, the the book that we're reading is gaslighting in relationships by Kristen thrasher and the thing i love about it the most is it's only one hour and 13 minutes (laughs) (laughs) unless that's gaslighting and it's really like four hours (laughs) yeah so like the longest hour (laughs) yeah we're like wait a second it was only supposed to be an hour no we said four (laughs) (laughs) all right well i love you so much. I love you too. I cannot wait this to cover fun. the topic of gaslighting next week. Yay. I know. It's going to be good. Okay. I love you. Hey, everybody. Make sure you visit. We have tons of new products on. We need help the podcast. Yeah. So we even have a let it burn it candle. So like if yes. you ever feel bad about any bridges burned or relationships, just light that candle and just let it burn. We need help the podcast.com for all that. Yay. See you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Rate and follow us if you like us. If you don't, please don't. And come visit us at www.theweneedhelppodcast.com. There you can find show notes, links for books. You can join Audible, which is, you know, how we actually read our books. (laughs) We listen to them and we have special exclusive content just for you. Also, feel free to subscribe to our Patreon account. That's where you can support us financially because we need it. And it can be anywhere from a dollar to $100 billion (laughs) a month, you know, whatever you can afford. (laughs) And uh, the link to our Patreon account is www.patreon, and that's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash We Need Help Podcast. And you can support... um, You can support us on there. We would really appreciate it because we do need help. Awesome. And we will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Thanks, loves. Bye.